morning, God morning, God morning, Instagram, God morning, Facebook Live. Good to see everybody this beautiful Sunday morning, October 1st of 2023, as we honor the Holy Trinity. We got the last quarter. This is where championships are won, my brothers and sisters. Championships are won in the fourth quarters. We've been saying here all along, it's not how you start the game of life, it's how you finish it. I say finish it strong. And today's topic is going to be on strong holds. What are the things that have strong holds over our life, over our mind, body, and spirit, over the things that we love and we enjoy doing? It's time to take control. It is time to take control of our destiny. Because we are the authors of our book of life. We are the directors of our movie. And that's all this is, is a movie. So thank you. Please like, share, comment. Follow me on TikTok. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me here on Facebook. That builds the algorithm. So we can share more of these messages. More people require that spiritual awakening. That's the key. How do we have a spiritual awakening? Because this, this, this war that we're fighting, it's not against flesh and blood. The Bible talks about this so important for us to step into our sovereignty owning ourselves and then what we're going to talk about today is the selfishness ways of this world and how we've been programmed to be selfish this is going to be some great content there's a lot to go through here so we're going to jump right into it love seeing the sunshine this morning i was taking these notes down this morning and the sun comes up in the morning boom hits me right in the face giving thanks man i'm telling you thursday night we're doing this roof uh, one of our project houses, I got home, like the chill was in the air, started fall time, right, October's here, and all of a sudden I felt that hot shower, I was just like, thank you God, man, just for a simple thing of a, a hot shower, so I remember back when I was in the military, cold showers out in bivouac, out in, out in the bush, out in the wilderness, bathrooms with like 20, 30 toilets all lined up, one big shower, I was going there. What are we taking for granted in this world? What are the strongholds that are taking control of our mind, body, and our spirit? And these notes right here are going to assist us unto owning ourselves. This is the key to life. You have to own everything that's in your life. You have to put those things in the past. We're going to focus on the next 31 days because this month has 31 days. What are you doing next time? I want you to stop looking back and wallowing in victimhood. The things that we could have done we didn't do. And the guilt and the shame and all those things we're going to talk about here. Leave them in the past. Can you do something for me this week? Focus on the next 31 days. 31 days is what it takes to change everything. 31 days of doing the same thing over and over day will create a new habit. It was, it was proved by NASA. 30 days, it's all it takes. We can shift the reality of our world. So please like and comment over here. You guys comment, I can see who's logging in. So today's topic is Hour of Power Podcast, Episode 30. Strongholds of the mind, body, and spirit. A stronghold is a defensive structure or a place that has been fortified, especially our minds need to be fortified, or a place where a particular cause or belief is strongly defended we have to protect our hearts we have to protect our minds what's the programming that's being inserted TV programming news programming social media programming is that of you Psalms 9 9 says the Lord is a refuge for the oppressed what's being happening right now we're all being pushed down being oppressed a stronghold in the times of trouble. The Lord is your stronghold in the times of trouble. Psalms 9 9 says. As it is written, truly I tell you, the ways of this little book can change everything. But we have to pick it up and read it for ourselves. That's the difference. There's an action step behind what we have to get done. 
So God morning. Welcome to the Hour Power Podcast, episode 30, Strongholds Over the Mind, Body, and Spirit. Of the mind are human ways. Lost, especially for a lot of us young men. We're just lusting over things. I've been hearing the story this week in Bible study that we've been doing, and man, how easy we can get swayed. Money. How easy we can get swayed by chasing money. We think that money's all this. When the Bible verse is coming up for Monday's Bible study, is talking about that. Get, go sell everything and follow me, Jesus said. How many of you would sell everything and go follow him? Self-doubt, self-pity, selfishness. There's a lot of what I see in the world today. Making life about you. Ultimately, victimhood and the feelings of not being enough, as we've said here many times. These feelings of not being enough is what's making us live in that past. That's a depressive place back there. We ain't living there anymore. We are not living in the past. We're going forward October 1st to October 31st. One of the things I'm going to put in my mind, body, and spirit that's going to help me move forward to take control of my destiny. In the body, pain, temptation, surrendering. The body's going to do what the body's going to do. But if we drink our lemon water, if we eat right, if we think right, if we move right, you will have control over your destiny. Because I see a lot of people right now struggling in health. Because it's very easy for our mind, body, and spirit to go into the, into the tanks, to go south. When we're not feeling good, man. We we just like and then these last couple of days it's been nothing but cloudy and cooler weather coming in here. We don't have the sunshine out there. It brings in the darkness. It makes the darker even darker. That makes sense. We're in the spirit. Connection, isolation, and defenses. Connection isolation defenses our spirit requires to be connected my brother Tim talked about collective consciousness I'll share this here in a minute how powerful collective consciousness is I talked about that about two years ago getting everybody together we're gonna shift the collective consciousness by all putting out the thoughts of the same idea going in the same direction isolation I spoke to a woman yesterday on the phone for about an hour as I was working on my tractor for cutting the grass. She called us up about a week and a half ago and says, hello, I'm, I'm calling, I want to help veterans. I've called this organization, I called this organization, and they all look at me like I'm crazy. I said, I just want to help veterans. I'm here all by myself. My husband's been dead for several years now. My body is breaking down, so what is she doing? She's in her head. She needs help. Thank God she reached out. She sent me a bunch of texts yesterday in between. Because I had another call come. I said, I gotta, I'll get back to you. And she sent me a bunch of texts. And man, I hope you're real. Are you real? Is the question of the day. Are you doing what you say you're going to do? Are you real with your situation? Or are you arguing with where you're actually at? Are you going to focus on these next 31 days? Write down three things on what you want and focus on that as I'll have a conversation today with my brother from last week, give him a homework and say, we'll see how he did these last seven days. Seven days is a great start. Go 31 days to change your habits, to change your life, is what I say. I love this psalm, Psalm 18 too. I was talking to my sister Gabby yesterday after our prayer call and she was having a challenging time with the isolation. 18.2 says, The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, stand upon. My shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. As today's topics are strongholds. What is a stronghold? What is your stronghold? What is your rock? What is your fortress? Who is your deliverer? 
If it's you, you're going to have some tough, bumpy roads ahead to, to, to navigate over. What is your, your deliverer of your life, of your mind, of your body, of your spirit? Psalms 27, 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Why? Because as it is written, it's already playing out as it was written thousands of years ago. All we got to do is read it. It's all happening in accordance with the scriptures. Fear not, for I am with you. Psalms 27, 1 goes on to read, The Lord is the stronghold of my life, of whom, of whom shall I be afraid? When evil men advance against me, which is happening today, to devour my flesh, when my enemies and my foes attack me, they will stumble. When you stand on 27.1. Psalms 27.1 has the power. You have to declare it. You have to believe it. You have to believe it with all your might. There's a prayer they go on here, to, they're going to read to us. A prayer to, to, to speak, to take down those walls, to break down those strongholds. Proverbs 21, 22. One who is wise can go up against the city of the mighty and pull down the stronghold in which they trust. What are you trusting? Are you trusting in man? You're going to have a tough time this is going to be a rough ride. Put on your helmet. Button your chin strap. It's going to be a rough ride if you're trusting this man. As that little brother was saying a couple years ago that I posted on my Facebook feed. Don't trust in man. Trust in the Lord. So breaking down the strongholds. 2 Corinthians 10.1 says, The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of this world. On the contrary... They have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Jesus Christ. There's a lot there to unpack. I would suggest looking that one up, 2 Corinthians 10 1. The weapons we fight are not the weapons of this world they are of the spirit which is where we are today there's a big shift going on right now you have to step into your sovereignty into your truth stop blaming and complaining stop being the victim that victim stop being selfish that was me I was selfish for many years and, this, and you're not wrong for being selfish that was our survival instincts kicking in. Then that became our habit. And all of a sudden now everybody's out for themselves. One of the beautiful things I saw on September 11th, how everybody came together for the common good. I love seeing people come together for the common good. Because we take down our defenses. We become like little children. We don't, we don't look about who's judging us. Who's com Who's looking at me funny? We don't think about those things in time of a requirement of a human need. What is the stronghold in your life that you have to break? Is it addiction, despair, alcohol, drugs, lust? A lot of us have to turn off this computer as we're being bombarded like arrows coming into your, your fortress on top of your rock. Arrows from all directions, the front, the back. You can't dodge them all day long. A couple of them are going to stick in. Next you know we're of those things. We're idolizing something that's not of us. Surrender to that idea. That's all it is. It's just the, the programming being bombarded upon us. So technology is good and it is bad. What are we taking in for these next 31 days 
It's today we turn the calendar to a, two, a new month. We're going to fall back pretty soon. It's going to start getting darker out. A lot of people go into a lot of despair and depression this time of year. October into November and December. It gets darker and darker and darker. But the holidays are coming. We have to give thanks in November. We have to honor Christ in December. Celebrate His birth. People are going to slow down. If you're a business owner. you got a lot to get done between now and the end of the year. And you know what's going to happen come Thanksgiving. Need that turkey. I'm just going to chill. I'm going to watch the football game. Have a couple beers. This glass of wine. I'll do that tomorrow. And that starts the procrastination cycle right into December. But if you're out there executing, this is where I made millions of dollars over the years in December. Everybody was slowing down. I sped up. Little hint for you guys. Do a little extra work during the holidays. Everybody else is taking off there on the bench, getting some water, getting a massage, riding the bike, staying warm, sitting on the sideline. But if you want to be a better player, this game of life, you have to get into the game. You have to get on the field. Sharpen our skills. Choice is ours. We can sit and watch and be a spectator. Cheer them on. Go! Go, guys! Or we can get onto the field. So you know what? Life is short. I got these next 31 days to sharpen my skills. One of the skills you're going to sharpen as we go forward in this game of life. The stronghold during the time of the Israelites. This is 1 Samuel. The time of the Israelites is the son of sons of Jacob. The Israelites were the sons of Jacob. And 1 Samuel talks about a stronghold during the time of the Israelites was a natural stone, a place high in the mountain, which was protective and a place of safety. When David was hiding from Saul, he dwelt in the strongholds. There was this beautiful oasis fed by a waterfall descending from the barren mountains along the Dead Sea. So even David was seeking the stronghold. He knew where it was. Top of the mountain, on top of the rock. Who is your rock? What is your rock that you're standing upon? How do we pull these strongholds down? This is the important part. Because we're all going to be... They said the weapons are not of this world. We have to be aware of what they are. How do we pull them down? Once we recognize, it goes back to that awareness we were talking about last week's episode. Once we recognize the stronghold, the next step to bringing it down is repentance. Have to repent. I did some repenting the last couple of weeks. And for the humanness, our human ways, we don't like to do those things. They're uncomfortable. They're not easy. Good morning. They're not easy sometimes. They're a challenge. Be honest before God. You have to be honest with yourself. You have to be honest in order to move forward. Otherwise, you'll be stuck where you were yesterday. Those are those 80,000 thoughts going through our mind. Most of them are negative in yesterday's thoughts. Holding us back. At the stronghold taking control of our life. And I just realized that we're not plugged in over here. And nobody's commenting, telling me about the the volumes on. So I'll have to post my Instagram feed over here on this side. Once you recognize the stronghold, the next step is bringing down it by repentance. Be honest before God and humbly let the Spirit expose the stronghold in the darkness. This is where we're entering. Into the darkness. People are talking about challenging times in the darkness. How do we get stronger? Drink some lemon. This is lime water today. I'm mixing it up this week. Get strong mentally. Is strong physically we're going to talk about in a minute here <clears throat> excuse me test me 
We have to pray. Here's the prayer. This is this is very important. I would write this down. Pray this. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind. When the Holy Spirit shows you an area of the darkness, repent. Meaning, the Holy Spirit's going to show you the area of darkness you need to work on. He will show you what you require to work on. You have to repent for it. So strongholds over the mind. Our human ways, the lust we spoke of, money, ideology, our selfish ways, making life about you. Making life about you. We are in this together. The collective consciousness is a powerful antidote. As my brother Tim was sharing about there's a did a study of collective consciousness and how it works. There's these islands and there was this guy went out there and started cleaning the sweet potatoes in the ocean and the monkeys were witnessing this. So all of a sudden the monkey started going down and washing it because what he did was he washed the sweet potato, he came over and he fed it to the monkey. The monkey said, This tastes a lot better than without all the dirt on it. So then the one monkey did the next monkey did it. And here's the ironic part. After all these monkeys, hundreds of them started washing their fruits. Washing the sweet potatoes. The monkeys on the neighboring island started doing the same thing. That's where we come in. As you pray these prayers. As you send out those thoughts. You send out those words into the universe. That's collective consciousness. We get 8,000 people going in the same direction. We can shift the collective consciousness of the world today. You have to give it with all your heart. You have to give it with everything you have. Don't worry about being judged. I know it's a challenge. Don't worry about being judged. You're standing in your sovereignty and your truth. And the truth's going to set you free. That's your gift. You have control over you. So I'm talking about my finishing closing arguments here. You have to take control of you. No one's going to do it for you. It's on you to do this. For the body, we talked about the pain, temptation. We're always being tempted. Where's that next shiny thing? Where's this next opportunity? Where's my next girlfriend or boyfriend? Where's my next queen candidate? My brother Gary would say. We're always being tempted. And for the spirit, connection, isolation, and defenses. We have to defend against the spirit. Because the war that we're fighting is not of the flesh and blood. It is not of the flesh and blood. So what can we do? For the mind, bring mindfulness to your thoughts and your words. We talked about this a couple weeks ago. The power of the spoken word. What are you thinking? This is a vibration that is sent out into the collective consciousness. We have the power to choose our thoughts and our words. So that falls on us individually and collectively. The power of choice. The hour of power. The first half hour the last half hour, the first five minutes, the last five minutes for you don't have a lot of time. So you tell yourself another story. What are you worshiping? What are you putting in there? What are you putting out there? What's the intention? What is the prayer that you're saying? That prayer is powerful, going to manifest into reality. Exercise to clean the body of toxins, eat clean, and your lemon or lime water. This is for the body. Exercise to clean out those cells. If we don't get this body moving, and all that stuff is sitting inside there, it's getting dirty. It's getting blackened. It's turning into that acidity water that you see in these pools that turn green that we speak of. You gotta get your pH balanced. You gotta put the right concoction in there to get the balance of the pH. That's the key. 
getting our body right, our mind right, and our spirit. And for the spirit, pray, meditate, grounding. That's what the Lord was showing me a couple weeks ago. Remind my brothers and sisters about grounding. Get barefoot, get outside in the grass. Watch the sunrise if you get up early. Take your shoes off, take your socks off, get into the ground with your bare feet. Watch the sunrise. It's the only time you can stare at the sun is while it's rising. There's no harmful UV rays. Ultraviolet rays cannot harm you that time of the day. That's your sacred space. Your sacred time as we talk about in our prayer call. Closing in on two years straight, seven days a week. Studying scripture. Pray day on Wednesday. Breaking down what did we learn on Saturdays. Sermons on Sundays. Reading scripture all the other days in between. This is how you learn from your brothers and your sisters. You learn from seeing. You learn from hearing. You learn from doing on the field. To see the playoffs are coming up here soon for Major League Baseball. This is where the championships are won. Mr. October, a lot of you guys remember back in the day, Reggie Jackson. Got the nickname Mr. October. He would show up at the closing bell. Good morning, David. He would show up October 1st of 2023. The next 31 days, David. What are you doing to shift your habits so you get what you want? And not being selfish while doing it, as we are saying here. That's the key. Don't make it about you. You'll get so far. That was me. You'll get so far by yourself. But eventually you'll be humbled. Because God is good all the time. He's always going to be there for you. He's always going to be showing you the way. We just forget to look. We forget to ask. And we forget to seek. Sometimes we got to knock. We just don't know which one of those three we have to do for that individual day, but you're going to have to utilize all those instruments, all those tools to get the kingdom to open for you, your wife, your family, your life. Fourth quarter's here. Now's the time to go all in on you. That's the mind, body, and the spirit. So this could go further. It says, what was the Jericho walk taking down the strongholds? I remember talking about this back in episode 3 or 4. <clears throat> the Jericho walk began over 3,000 years ago. 3,000 years ago with a group of God's children holding an intentional God-led prayer walk around the walls of Jericho to defeat the enemy. They kept walking around and around these big tall walls. They were thick, heavy. How they built these walls, we're still trying to figure that out 3,000 years ago. How are you lifting those things up? The Jericho walk began over 3,000 years ago with a group of God's children. Think about that. The children already know. They're not conditioned by the ways of, the, of man. The ways of the world. For us today... We will walk and pray to defeat our enemy who tries to mire us in self-doubt, self-pity, selfishness, arrogance, and strongholds. That's what the enemy is doing today to our children, to you and I, to our loved ones. We have to take control of that. So what did they do? What caused the walls to fall? <clears throat> For six days, six days, Joshua marched his troops around those walls. Seven priests carried the Ark of the Covenant around the city walls throughout those six days, blowing the ritual shofar. If you don't know what a shofar is, it's a ram's horn. And they blow into it, and it's very challenging to get it to make the noise. But it makes a very distinct sound. On the seventh day, they marched around the city seven times. And on the seventh trip around the wall, the priests blew the horns. The, the crowd shouted, and the walls came tumbling down. Those big heavy walls 
came crumbling down. How is that possible? Is it faith? Is it persistence? Is it 31 days straight this month? How are you going to change your habits? That is the choice that we have to break the strongholds over our lives. For some of us, it's addiction. Some of us, it's our health. Some of us, it's despair, depression, anxiety. We have to break the strongholds by those three things of the mind, body, and spirit. Mindfulness of your thoughts and your words is how you control the mind. And watch what you're taking into the mind. What are you seeing? What are you hearing? This is becoming you. You're being programmed, Dave. Julio. Lewis. Tammy. Of, of the body. Exercise to clean out those toxins in our body. Everything's toxic nowadays. The air, the water, the food. We have to get that stuff out of our bodies. This lemon water, man, you can smell it in your urine. I was telling the guys over at Home Depot, I've been challenging them. Drink a glass a day. Drink a couple glasses a week. He said, man, I can smell it in my urine. What is that? So those are toxins in your body being discharged. How do you feel? I asked him. I said, man, I feel better. I said, look at your skin. Look in the mirror. I can see your, your skin's getting more of a complexion, brighter and, and cleaner. More energy. He said, I do have more energy. That's simple one step. And the third thing, pray, meditate, grounding. Daily prayer. Daily meditation. Grounding at least once or twice a week. Those are powerful tools to defeat those strongholds. So surrendering to the Lordship, God's Lordship. After victorious entering the Promised Land, Joshua decided in his heart to dedicate all of Jericho's plunder, the silver, the gold, the vessels of bronze, and iron. Because even back then, iron was valuable. Surrendered so all of it. Father God. And that's what they were talking about in Matthew coming up here on this Monday in our Bible study. Would you surrender everything to follow Him? For a lot of us humans and the attachments that we have to these things in this world, many of us would say no. Would you give up your house or your finances to follow Him? It's a challenging, tough question. I understand. These things were sacred to the Lord and it was Joshua's firm conviction to put God first and honor Him with all His treasures. That's how you get to the kingdom. That's how you enter into the kingdom. 2.6 million Christians in the world right now, David. Lewis. Not many of them are getting into the heaven. That's eternity. That's forever. This little bit of a lifespan that we're here, it's not a very long time. 70, 80, sometimes 100 years old. Not very long. <clears throat> the book of Matthew. Sell all your possessions and follow me. It's easier to put a camel through the eye of a needle than a rich man to enter heaven. Again, 2.6 million. A lot of things that we're doing of this world, not getting in. We need to start thinking about this. How do we study the instruction manual of life? You know, Kathy just started up a, her own group study a week and a half ago. She's getting so much revelation. I come by and see her. She's there for an hour and a half taking notes. So proud of you, Kathy. It takes a lot of effort to get onto the field of play, to become a better player, become the most valuable player of your life. Your wife, your community, your kids are counting on you. Where in your life do we need to level up in our health, in our mindset. 95% of what we do is mindset. That connection is so important. What are you connecting to? Is it the TV? Is it social media? You're connecting to the source energy. Because everything is energy. Everything's vibration, what we're sending out. Our words, our thoughts, our deeds. All vibration being sent out. When God orchestrates a great victory in our lives, He is worthy to receive the first fruits of the battle, giving it to Him. By putting Him first, 
with the spoils of war, because we are fighting this war, it's a spiritual war we're fighting. He faithfully provides us, see Matthew 6, 33, in return. He will faithfully provide for us in return. By honoring Him in His way, we demonstrate our absolute surrender and thankfulness to Him. This is when we truly got to surrender. This is what I did back 48 years old, back in 2016, fully surrenders to Him. The way I've been doing is not working. When we come to the end of our ropes, our ways, that's when He steps in. He starts, the Holy Spirit starts to lead you into your truth. That's why it's so important to write down what you want from what you want. Not what the world wants of you. Not what everybody else wants of you. Mother, your father, husband, wife, kids, neighbors, employees, not what they want from you. What do you want? By honoring Him in this way, we demonstrate our absolute surrender and thankfulness to Him and position ourselves to receive even more from our generous and good Father. We can never outgive Him. I remember back in my early days of the Next Level Brotherhood, Raul, leader of the group, would challenge me. He says, Joe, you give too much. And this day, conversation with Sister Gabby, you give too much. I mean, it was like the serve is what I call it now. I'm serving. I said, listen, Raul, I'm coming to outgive God. And if I don't, I'm okay with being second. This is where I come here to serve. I don't give anymore. Giving cost me a lot. I've been crucified from giving so much. So now I'll help you build your cross. As a carpenter, I will help you build your cross. I am not going to carry it for you. I attempted in my previous version of myself to carry everybody's cross. After a while, I got real heavy. I got real burdensome. Couldn't do it. People blame me things didn't own what they were doing hey man you, you mean if I, I don't sit here on this couch and just pray all day long I'll be saved no Jesus specifically says when he comes back make sure he finds you working are you doing the good works or are you being selfish What are the walls we built for ourselves based upon the lies and deceit of the enemy? Many of us, including myself, built walls. My walls were walls of anger. I built these big old walls. I wasn't letting nothing in, nothing out. Kept it all to myself. All alone. Who can relate to being all alone? In the fight, not asking for help. Matthew 7 requires us ask, seek, knock. We have to tear those walls down. Seven trips below the shore far. As I hear her brother Jorge Pantaleon's name coming up because he has a shofar. We have to blow our own shofar to take down our own walls that we built based upon the lies and deceit of the enemy. He told us you weren't enough. He told us that you're not pretty enough you're not handsome enough, you're not skinny enough, you're not heavy enough, you don't have enough money, not enough time. All these lies we were told, you have all the time that you require within you now. We're just distracted by all these arrows coming into our fortress from all directions. We're distracted we're trying to dodge all those arrows. But when you stand upon the rock, when you stand upon your truth, the weapon will be formed against you. The weapons will be formed, but they will no longer penetrate you, because you know who you are. So I was talking with the new neighbor this week in one of our new project houses we picked up last week. He said, man, you're really convincing. I said, no, I'm convicted. I don't have to convince anybody. Once you're convicted, you don't have to convince anybody. You don't have to sell anybody anything. Because you're standing for what you believe. Your truth. Your sovereignty. Based upon the instruction manual life. 
the Holy Bible, as it is written, truly I tell you, it will come to pass. The things that you speak are bound here on earth and in heaven. That's why he says, I'm coming back to judge the living and the dead. You're going to get judged either way. We can't do that as humans. We try. We attempt it. Who are we to judge? We're in a classroom, not a courtroom. You are in this classroom of life. As I was sharing with my brother on the phone yesterday. The Game of Life and How to Play It by Florence Scovel Shin. I would encourage you to pick up that book. Small little book. Metaphysician she was. Manifesting what she was speaking, thinking, doing. You cannot play the game of life successfully unless you know the rules of the game. You have to find out the rules as they are written, obeying the commandments. Thou shalt not steal, honor thy mother and thy father. Keys to the kingdom. We are seeking the keys to the kingdom. When God orchestrates victory in our life, great victory, He is worthy to receive the first fruits. That's the key. Give Him the first fruits of your tree. It's going to take a little while, some pruning. A lot of us don't like it. It's uncomfortable. They got out those loppers and they start taking off some of your branches. That hurts. But the fruits, first fruits, give them back. The Bible says you are to tithe 10% of your earnings. That's why I think some of the churches go wrong. You walk in and say, where's your W-2? You're required to pay us 10%. And they start demanding things of us. That's why a lot of people get turned off to Christianity. Sometimes the way the, the, the churches operate. And a lot of these churches are doing great jobs out there. Some of them need a little improvement. And they get turned off and all of a sudden they're hanging out at the bar instead of with their parishioners. Because they feel welcomed. Not being judged in that place. And all of a sudden, years later, it doesn't work anymore. The pain pills that we've been taking for years wear off because now we're addicted to them. The body builds up this tolerance, the alcohol. I need more to sedate this pain. Because we were unwilling to face the pain. And that's what I did for 38 years. For those that don't know my story. 38 years I ran from that pain until I faced it by putting up some of my own money, time, and energy into me. I said, there's more to this life. Because you only got so many years. You're going up, and then you're going down this hill of life. When you get to the top, that's the fortress. That's when you can look out across the vast land and see everything. Don't be in the darkness. Don't be inside of your room. So I have a local veteran here. He just sleeps in this one little room of his house. We've been assisting him. Service. We have to serve our brothers and sisters. Help the poor. The Bible commands us to help the poor. The walls that we built for ourselves, many of us built the walls of anger, jealousy, hate, despair, and victimhood. Now we play the victim for a long time. You can play that victim card. Eventually it gets old. People don't want to be around you. I heard the story of this one guy. I have no friends. Yeah, who wants to be around misery? Who wants to be around your complaining and blaming all the time? If you don't own, guys, what you're doing in this world, it will overtake you. Let's see, I'm running out of time here. Our prayer call's coming up. <clears throat> the walls of doubt, fear, and not feeling enough will keep us captive to the things of this world. Peace, love, joy, and hope of His promises will endure forever. Eternity is what we are speaking of. Eternal life. The challenge we as humans have, we lie within our selfishness, well, selflessness is the covenant. Selflessness is the covenant. The kingdom of heaven, where all dwell in harmony, is peace and love. So now we have a choice. 
We can be this or we can be that. But you can't be both. What are you choosing to do these next 31 days? October 1st today, guys. Brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers. Today is October 1st. Challenge you. Every one of you for the next 31 days. What are you going to do to get what you want that's of service to those that you love? Including yourself. Serve yourself first, as I was sharing with Sister Gabby yesterday. Because when our cup is empty, we cannot give what we don't have. Impossible to give what you don't have. We have to fill ourselves with That's why you see me going fishing, playing golfing, doing things that are enjoyable. Playing softball. Go do some karaoke. Go for a walk in the wilderness. Have fun, guys. This life is meant to be fun. Enjoyable. Turn off the news. Stop reading the newspaper for 31 days. Give that one a good fast. You want a good fast? Turn off the news. Turn off the TV. Turn off all these things of the outside world. And do what's good for the mind, body, spirit. Pray. Meditate. Grounding. For you. Because you deserve it. No one told you today? You deserve it. All these things. Blessings and peace. Take control of our lives through your mind, body, and spirit practices is what I'll leave you with today. Take control of your lives through your mind, body, and spirit practices as they were laid out here for you today. I pray for you. I love you. I appreciate you. I thank you for following this journey 30 episodes later. Seems like yesterday we were doing episode 1 about our brother Yarek. How he was obtaining all the riches of the world, but he lost himself in the process. Don't do that to yourself. Honor yourself, honor your mother, honor your father. This is your temple. You get one temple. What are you putting into it? What are you putting into it? What are you putting into it? What are you putting into your ears, your mind, your eyes? What are you seeing? Because this is recorded. It's all recorded. This mind's like a big recorder. It records everything. That's why so many of us live back here. That's where the mind wants to go. What's familiar? Don't live there. Focus on these next 31 days. I challenge you. Write down three things that you want. Do the work that was outlined here for your mind, body, and spirit. Eat healthy. Exercise. It's key for this machine. This is a machine. Flawless. If you give it Lou Russo, 100 years old, no glasses, no medication. How do you do it? If you eat right, you feel right, he would say. All the time. So if you're not feeling good today, you need to start looking at what we're putting into this body. What we're putting into this mind. And go out there and get connected to your higher power, your higher self. Christ consciousness, they call it. The collective consciousness. Grounding. Watch the sunrise in the morning. And there's nobody awake. You're out there on the field of life. Giving it all you got. That's the gift. The power of choice that God has given each and every one of us each and every day. This wraps up and concludes episode 30 of the Hour of Power. The first five minutes of the day, the last five minutes of the day, whatever you put into your mind, body, and spirit is what you worship. I can promise you, if you put the things that you want into your mind, body, and spirit, you will become that. And from that space, you will bless those around you. You will lift them up. You will inspire them to be in their spirit, in your spirit, being convicted of your truth. And once you're convicted, you don't have to convince anybody. And remember, it's not how you start this game of life. It's how you finish it. Finish it strong. Break the strongholds. Today's topic, break them. Because you have a choice, the power of choice, to break everything that's holding you back and holding you bondage. Breaking the chains. There's power in the name of Jesus. I love you all and I appreciate you. Keep showing up. They have not seen nothing yet. When it's all said and done, together. We will rise as one. I love you all. We'll see you next week for episode 30. Right here as we're traveling to Staten Island for a beautiful wedding. Looking forward to the wedding this week up in Staten Island, or Long Island, I should say. What a gift. A gift of life when two become one. One flesh. I love you all. Have a blessed and fantastic day. We'll see you next week.